He just shows up. And believe me, everyone in his presence, they fall down at his feet. If they can be seen for who he is, he is majestic. See, this is our, this is, this is our God. He's, he, no one's ever come into the presence of God and not known. He's, he's filled with majesty. See, this is, this, is a, this is a concept that needs to be seen. Now, our government actually makes it harder to understand how God's kingdom works. Because, see, God's kingdom is not a democracy. God doesn't poll the people to see what they want and then change his doctrine to fit it. He doesn't do that. I mean, you know, a democracy does do that. They, they poll the people. They say, well, what do the people want? Let's give them what they want. So they'll keep giving us money, right? Well, obviously... Then the kingdom of heaven is the realm where God has total dominion over his subjects. Total and absolute. Now, see, there's a lot of implications to, what, to that, a lot of implications. It means that he can, like the potter, have power over the clay to make one vessel unto honor and make another of the same lump unto dishonor. Why? Because he's the king. He has the dominion. He has the authority. It's his clay, after all. So see, this is, this is um, the, the, the likeness. You want to come away from this, seeing it for what Jesus wants us to see in it. Unless a person has some understanding of how Jesus' kingdom works, they won't gather the information or the instruction or the wisdom that, that Jesus has endowed this text with. And, the, and to some degree, they... It will be incapable of doing what this text implies. Implies being ready. Implies readiness. See, that everything, uh, everything Jesus said about the last time implies readiness, immediate readiness. Not like you can, you know, kind of like lapse off and then you'll get ready at the end. That, nah. in fact, he talks against that. Everything Jesus says about his coming or about the end all promotes readiness, instant readiness, to where you don't know when. So be ready. You know, this is, this is all bound up in it, in these, in these different texts. Daniel, remember Daniel? He talked about this kingdom that we're talking about today. He said in Daniel 2.44, talking about kingdoms, and in the days of these kings, the kings of the earth, shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Again, a little bit later, 4.3. How great are thy his signs, and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and his dominion is from generation to generation. He never gives his kingdom up to others, and his dominion never wanes. It never fails. See, it may, it may appear that way to men now. And this is why men are so, they boast. The scoffers are like everywhere today. Why? Because, see, it appears as though his dominion has waned. But it has not. It has not waned. Not one, not one bit. The word of the king will come true. Absolutely. Every jot and every, every single thing the Lord has said will come true. There will be some that are caught unaware. Some. Now, Nebuchadnezzar, <laughs> he can testify concerning this kingdom. Daniel 4, 34, And at the end of, of, his, of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and mine understanding returned unto me, and I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion. He was given to see this while he was out there eating grass. See, he, he, remember he stood there and he said, Look at the kingdom that my hands have made. Instantly, his reasoning left him. He went out there, started eating grass, and God taught him a little something out there. Taught him about his dominion, his kingdom. That's what he says. And his kingdom is from generation to generation, and all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. They were, well, this sounds kind of negative. Not, not really. As nothing. And he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven. <laughs> God's got an army. Why? Because he has dominion. Why? Because he has a kingdom. Why? Because he's a king. <laughs> this, this, this is our great God and king. Well, why is it important for us to know this now in this time that we live in? Because God hasn't changed. 
He's the same. Amen. Jesus revealed that the kingdom of God is come to you. See, it's not like something that's going to happen. Remember in Luke eleven twenty. But if I, with the finger of God, cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God has come upon you. It's here right now. Remember, he said it doesn't come with observation. Matthew 12, 20, it says, But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come unto you, or else how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods? There's someone stronger right here. The prince of the power of the air, was, had, had, he was no match for the Son of God. I mean, even at his weakest point, when his strength was, was nearly over, he emptied of strength. He just destroyed the devil by the sacrifice of himself. Yeah. See, this was, this was, there's one sense in which Jesus, it took every single thing he had. And there's another sense in which just, just a word he could dispatch him. But see, he was putting away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And so this, he was doing something that was greater than just beating the devil up. He was taking away sin. Amen. So that's why he did it in the manner in which he did it. It wasn't that Satan was so strong. It was that Jesus was taking away sin. At the same time, he delivered the death blow to Satan. See, Satan's dominion, in order for this to occur, in order for Jesus to be able to put away sin, the Jesus' dominion had to be greater than Satan's dominion. Had to be. That's the point he's making here. How could I enter in and, and bind a strong man unless I've been stronger than he is? So he come in and he took away sin by the sacrifice of himself. It looked like he was weak, but he was the superior one. His dominion, his kingship, his lordship. People say, well, you know, you've received him as Savior, now make him your Lord. This is impossible. He's, he is the Lord. Amen. He doesn't ask anybody to make him. God set him up, made him to be Lord. He's the Lord of glory. Now, I've taken the long road here for a reason, because it's important to see what Jesus is talking about in the context of what he's talking about, to really get out of it what he's saying here. Now, the kingdom of heaven, it's likened unto a net. Now, the scriptures are full of references to nets, uh, and, and you can really get, get bogged down here. But see, there, there are some different kinds of nets, and there are some different ways that God has even talked about nets and the approaches to how do you understand this. Uh, fishermen, obviously, are the most likely to be found using fishermen nets, but there are other nets that can be employed. And nets, in, in some senses, can be talked about like a snare, like a gin, a, something that's set to capture something else. Now, some, some of those you use bait in. The kind of nets that he's talking about, you don't use bait. The, the net, the net, the kingdom of heaven is like a net. See, it, it, it's going to catch it. You take the net and you drag it through the water, and it does the catching. Mm -hmm. See, now, if you were just going for like a single meal, you wouldn't use a net. You'd use a pole with bait. You know, that's like heresies or like kind of like that. They're trying to trap you just one at a time. But this net, God's got a net. And he's just scooped up of every kind. He just, he just gathered together. Some of these nets nowadays are like two and a half miles long in China. They got two boats and they run these nets. And they gather $6 billion in fish a year. These are big nets. God's got a bigger net. Bigger net. He's going to gather of every kind at one time. And the net's not going to break either. The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a net. See, uh, warriors, they use a different kind of netting. They're a kind of netting they'll throw on you, try to entrap you just for a second. Just for a second. If they can trap you for a second, you're dead. Instantly. See, there's the warriors. All they need is a moment, the one single moment of opportunity, and you're dead. So, see, the net just gives them that, just that little bit of advantage. Well, see, that's not the kind of net we're talking about. But, see, these are the kind of ways that nets are employed. The word net... In those scriptures, in the old covenant writings, are commonly re referred to as a snare. In fact, it's almost always bad. When you look at the way that the word net is used and how they're used, it's almost always bad. Listen to this Job knew about these kinds of bad nets. He says, the steps of his strength shall be straightened, and his own counsel shall cast him down, for he is cast into a net by his own feet. The very things that he tried to use to hurt somebody else came back on him. It was like a net. It caught him. What, 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 the, the inference there is he couldn't get out. He, 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 
persisted in something so long that he was entrapped by 